G'day. Well, today we forget van life and look into truck life with an artist who's made this fantastic gypsy conversion almost all by herself with the help of some great friends. So let's go and say g'day. G'day, g'day, g'day. Hey, how are you? Yeah, very good. Yourself? Good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what are you up to? I'm just um, hanging out actually, yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is my truck. I'm a truck lifer. Um, I did the van life thing and I just kind of needed a little bit extra room. Yeah. Yeah. So you did it yourself? Yeah, well I bought it. It was ready to go with ant infestation and cockroaches and it was rotten and rusty and it hardly started. So um, I bought it for five grand and I've spent two years just kind of making it move <laughs> yeah right <laughs> two years in the truck uh why did you decide to do truck life um i was kind of forced into it it was like a unfortunate series of events i had a job offer that fell through i had uh, my studio and my home were being demolished so i had to move out and i paid for a bond on a living studio that um, fell through at the very last minute and it was four thousand dollars for the removal truck so i saw this for five and i thought well it's a removal truck it's storage it's living it's just like and i was just forced into a corner so i just um it, it seems so cheap and so i just kind of grabbed it so talk to me about your work uh i've been a self-employed artist for almost 20 years i'm really interested in in all alternative everything <laughs> alternative health <laughs> alternative living like um I love it. I mean, I grew up in a, in a hippie community with my parents who are musicians and they travel for work. And so I, I um, yeah, I was inspired by what they started, I think, their journey. So I just started making things and selling it. And I just recognized that artwork, um, that people resonated with my artwork and wanted to buy it. And um, then I started painting murals. Where have you painted walls at? I started in London. Okay. My second was Banksy's Cans Festival, which is the biggest street art festival in the world. So painted in this massive street art festival and then came back to Australia and, and I entered a street art painting competition and won and, um, and have painted walls ever since. This is a very convenient mobile accommodation because I was traveling <clears throat> somewhere every two weeks or every month. So do you do all your painting from the van, from, from the truck? Unless I need to fly to work. Yep. Um, but if I can drive there, it's a lot It's a lot better. And you've got a studio? In Sydney and in Byron. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Let's check it out. So what have we got going on in here? So I'm creating a collection of works for a space in Byron. There's a few originals that I'm still working on. These are just works in progress. It's beautiful colours and... Thank you. Yeah, so there's some originals and there's some prints that I just got produced. I've done a, a little series of prints that um, I'm mounting onto wood and I'm going to put um, a liquid glass varnish over the top. Okay. So it's all repurposed wood and, and prints of previous artworks. So Beautiful. I'm just creating a little print series of those right now. I also do cushions and bags and things like that. So how long have you been an artist for? Or? Um, I think that... I always painted, but I, I've been doing murals full time for 12, 12 years right. and I'm just moving into more studio work and, and print reproductions, which I'm excited to do because I was painting really big walls and um, I'd love to balance it with a bit of studio time. As a self-employed artist, I'd never know what's happening next. So project to project and the truck is so essential in being my movable accommodation. So you'd park your van? At the front of work. <laughs> at work <laughs> in sydney melbourne wherever. yeah you know even if it is like going a kilometer or two or there's always somewhere good you can stay yeah it's very nice all right well thanks for showing us the studio yeah, yeah. Cool. let's go and talk <laughs> about your van again nice so what was that transition like moving from a house to a to a truck transitioning to a truck has been incredibly difficult i guess because i wasn't necessarily going right i'm going to get rid of everything and be a full-time van lifer so it was very difficult. I was living in it from the first day I got it while painting it and de-rusting it. And it was disgusting to live in a construction site and it was incredibly <laughs> frustrating. I also didn't have a space to build it. 
So I was outside Bunnings, just on the side of the road, just with power tools. All of my furniture is removable, so I can take it all out if I have a project mm -hmm. or um, something happening. And, you know, I've hosted women's circles in here. I had music jams and, awesome. you know, I've had four people sleeping in here. And so, you know, it's an adaptable space that I've built. It's really nice to have your bed out of the way. It's a separate room, so it, you know, it doesn't matter if you, you've got paints and food and, and people over. Everyone's not trampling through your kind of, you know, you, your bed area. And I love that this one opens to the outside because, I mean, part of the joy is to park up on the beach and have the view that you, you would always want to have, you know. I yeah. can take it wherever I want to be in a, a festival, you know, I'm, I'm a chai truck and I, I, it's a communal space for people to come and conjugate and socialize and, you know, jam and stuff. So um, I love that it opens to the outside world because that's where I want to be. I just wanted something weird, <laughs> cool, different. Right. This one was just so quirky, but it's also compact. You know, I can park this like a car. How compact it is, yet how spacious it is. It's like Mary Poppins bag. Like, it's got my whole life in there. Yeah. And it's not just life, it's work and life. And I paint big murals, so it has all the work boxes underneath. So I keep a lot of my, my work stuff externally. And I have a fold-up ladder and I, you know, have a bath, I have a toilet. I have, like, you know, like, you know, I can cook, I can have people over I can take people with me on journeys and can do everything that I need so what type of truck is it it's a Ford Econo van so technically it's a van what year uh, 99 and it's got power steering and manual yep. manual auto it's manual so it's custom built I didn't build all of it I modified it heavily and um, it can be taken off boy or girl my truck yeah maybe it's um non-binary <laughs> well, there was a boy that's half transitioned I mean I have painted it pretty made it quite feminine I guess does your truck have a name um it's, it's kind of embarrassing but it's the honest truth I called it the turd because <laughs> it was such a piece of shit when I bought it and I was really angry with myself I was on location painting this massive mural in Melbourne and I had very limited time and I just went to see it and I'd made the decision before I went to see it and it looked beautiful in the photos and he said ready to go and I looked at it and I was so disappointed when I saw it but I didn't have much time you know so I, I just kind of it was so cheap I just kind of thought oh I'll make it work <laughs> you know so I called it the turd <laughs> and now it's called turdy affectionately now that it gets me from A to B and <laughs> all right well let's um let's have a tour of turdy okay cool <laughs> well, welcome to my madness the first thing I wanted and was inspired to create was a bit of a gypsy wagon, you know. I wanted it to be a home and something warm and welcoming. Like I paint murals and I'm exhausted and filthy at the end of the day. I wanted to come back to something that was warm and nurturing. It's actually incredibly narrow for a truck. It's only 1.8 wide. It's spacious because it's got the overhanging cab. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it feels even more spacious because I've put two huge windows in up the top. So I extended the ceiling up that changed everything and makes it a really nice area in the bedroom. Mostly my biggest objective was to spend no money, <laughs> which is impossible. So right. everything is recycled or scavenged or refurbished or repurposed. So this is my kitchen. This is just a very old broken thing that I have fixed and I Frankensteined it with another thing so that it fitted size wise. So I really love this little addition because anything that like makes it a little bit bigger you know you might be having like more than one person yep it's so simple i just got yeah, one little cool. gas cooker i don't really i just i've created all these one pot meals so one pot meal what would that typically look like well instead of having scrambled eggs on toast i'd have french toast and i'll just do the vegetables first and there's some things i just don't eat or make anymore because it's just too hard right. i used to dye my hair pink i'm just not going to do that anymore <laughs> just too hard it's it is a philosophy about minimalizing things and about simplifying things and like getting back to basics so um so that's just what you're forced to do and what you have to embrace how do you stop that from moving your cupboard is it fixed um, to the wall or it's actually got these beautiful little hooks that um that hook over the wall this is insulation so i've put multiple layers of sucking and insulation behind yep. cell foam and sucking to reflect the radiant heat. So 
Exactly. And I wanted to keep these supports so that I could attach things to it. These are beautiful. They're just from yeah, IKEA, awesome. and I've made a little shelf that they attach onto. Yeah. The herbs need full sun, so I'll attach them to the door and open the door to get sun for them, and then they can be washed out. And you know, I'll eat the herbs, and then I'll use them for, you know, something else. And everything has a little little hook, so it was incredibly hard to do. Um, but I put little, you know, things so that it clips in. If you forget to clip it, then it ends out out, out everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and I just have like everything in little, like pull out, just perfect. They were ice cream buckets that I found. The most fantastic thing I ever got. It's okay, just a it? fold down laundry bucket, and I use it as a foot soak. I use it as a bath. I know I look ridiculous, but no one's here to see me, so who cares? <laughs> um, and when I paint a mural and I come home, I'm covered in paint, I'm dirty, and it's just really nice to be able to wash yourself. I've got a yoga membership and they've got beautiful shower. I've got a studio and it's got, you know, a shower, but I'm always on the move and you never know where you are. And so that's just really great. And this is my washing line. It's one of those ones that are pegless. Very so you just neat. put your um, clothes between the, the, okay. the twelve elastic. Right. Um, and does it work all right? Yeah, it's good. If you put it in properly. Where do you keep your water? My water is underneath. I've got a 50 litre tank. Okay. I also have another tank for washing outside or washing your feet. Which I also have one metal box that I have more water in. Like, because sometimes I go to a festival, I want to take 100 litres. Yeah. I also go and get fresh spring water from the markets, but that's plumbed up to here. But I've just got a 12 volt pump that's directly, um, I just hardwired it to my battery. And so, this is just a Frankenstein thing off the side of the road that I just made to fit here. I have some wonderful friends that have helped me and supported me some that just just like took an interest in it like people offer to help you've got some really cool mirrors yeah so I wanted to glamorize homelessness okay so at first I put the lights around it so it was like a star mirror it's also a good wet area because like the kitchen has the metal and that has the the, the perspex not glass and that was just from reverse garbage which I loved I got the metal for the kitchen from reverse garbage I got a number of weird materials like foam and stuff like that. Yeah, right. It's all industry waste that's repurposed. In, in here, it's just like my toiletries. Yep. And I have had to cut it to fit my plumbing. Everything has a kind of double purpose too. Like this is just a door, but it is also like a second kind of uh, yeah. bench if I really need it. This was all purpose built to house my surfboard. The couch is also a bed, so if I have friends over, I just chuck it on the ground and they can sleep on there. This is, at the moment, a extra chair, but also like um, a table. So if I'm eating dinner with somebody, I'll use that as a table. These kind of things with extra storage are like super useful. Yeah. My skylight over the bed is really the exit point. It's like a hatch that you can get up and onto the roof. How do you run your power and what power do you have now? I have a 275 amp deep cycle battery. I house enough power to run my small setup constantly. I don't actually desperately need solar, but I've got a, um, a flexible solar panel that I'm gonna stick up the up the top. Okay, so what type of um, inverter have you got? It's just a 500 watt. I use 240 volt power tools yep. because I've been building things in here. So it's been really useful for that, but everything's under 500. Electricity wise, you've got your fridge. I've got my fridge. Um, I charge my laptop. This is my chair and my desk. This slides out, but okay. um, I sit on here if I want to work on anything. But it's also a treasure chest because I wanted to make it look exciting. And it's also my wardrobe, <laughs> which is at capacity, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so I have very simple, very low wattage LED lights. Yep. And then I put a dimmer. Wow, that is funky. And this one, I love this one because I think you've got to have like, you got to have night mood. And so um, this one is my night light. So this is a famous bedroom. Yeah, this is How my cool little is this? bedroom. It's really nice to be up high. I think I, I feel quite safe up here, a bit like sleeping in a tree house or something. Except if you park right at the beach and it's windy, you shake and you feel more wobbles at the top so this all ended at this height and I extended the roof up. 
I put the skylight in and I put this window here. Where'd you get the skylight from? I got it from a, a wrecker and it's actually just a Dometic window. It's a really, really good window and it seals really well. It's got all those clamps and it's yeah. got a great seal on it, but it's just a window. It's not, it's, it's not. not supposed to be a skylight, but all the sky hatches were tiny and I'm like, no, I want my roof open to the <laughs> sky. And you've got another window here. Yeah. You? I put that one in myself. You. That was my first window attempt. Yep. Which was it's it's really nice because it's it's private. You know, you can have it open and no one can really see that, but you can see the outside, which is nice. Being up high and back onto the onto the roof. I had to put vents in underneath the bed, so I I built a bed base to fit, and it, of course it's not a bed length, so I had to cut um, cut mattress to fit, and then I sewed a twelve volt electric blanket to my bed because I had a few cold nights um, and I kept experimenting with different layers because I wanted the thinnest mattress prop possible. Talking about parking around the city, it's not quite a stealth van is it? No. I wish I could like camo and then camo mode and then back to rainbow mode because it is so loud. But yeah, some people will look at it with a, a look of horror on their face. Everywhere I drive, people's expressions are priceless to me. It's a constant source of amusement. What's the biggest challenge about living in a van truck? I'd like to think there's a solution for everything. I was cold, I find a 12 volt blanket. It's hard and a hassle to wash your hair, I find dry shampoo. So I, I love finding solutions for things and I enjoy making it a comfortable, beautiful home that I want to come back to and that I want to share with other people. But it's, it's never going to be a house. I can grow a couple of vegetables. I have, I want to eat live plants. I believe that's like healthy and wholesome. And I want to eat, you know, I want to, I want to eat really well. And I want to, I want to drink clean water. And sometimes you have to work a little bit harder to do those things. I think in one aspect, it connects me to other humans because I'm constantly meeting new people, but maybe my old friends don't ever know where I am. So maybe they don't call me because they don't drive past my house anymore. They can't just drop by. Can anybody just move into a van or a truck? You have to really want to do it and you have to enjoy the problem solving and the adaptation to a completely different system. Like I'm a surfer so I love waking up and like rolling out of bed and going straight to the beach. For me, I've done that all the time. That's such a joy in my life. What is your number one thing you love about this life, about truck life? I really like being connected to nature. Like if it rains, I can hear it, even through earplugs. If it's windy, I feel it. If the temperature drops at night, I need to put another blanket on. Um, I can hear and feel the swell. I know when there's waves because I'm right there. And if there's a lightning storm at night, I'm on the beach in the dark watching it. The ocean is my therapy and like just such a place to connect with yourself and nature. It's like a meditation and it's essential. I can't have that house with a view, but I can have that view whenever I want it. That's so valuable. So what would be your number one tip for anyone contemplating van life? Spend a little bit more to get something decent in the beginning. Yep. And if you're not a carpenter and if you're not really prepared to learn, then buy something set up. Yeah, I guess if, if it really depends on the individual. That's what I love about van life. People really make it what they need. It can be really simple. It could just be a mattress in the back of your van and nothing else. I've met people who just put some fairy lights in a mattress and that's their mobile bedroom. Thank you very much for introducing yeah. us to Turdy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> One more question before we get out of your hair. Would you ever ditch truck life and move back into a house? I don't know. I'd like to try normal life one day. <laughs> That'd be interesting. <laughs> I would always have this on the side. This is like my freedom mobile. I'd love to try putting it on a container, shipping it overseas and, and, and taking it international. Yeah, I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Yeah. Two years in and only just begun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome. On that note, we're gonna let you get back to 30 and enjoy cool. the rest of your day. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>